countdown, but I timed it. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. Hi everyone, are we live? Are we on air? Hi guys, welcome to my Friday night curry club. Welcome to my kitchen. I hope everybody's good. I hope everybody's happy. I hope everybody's got a drink. Happy Friday. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, as always, please let me know you're here. Let me know that you're, if you're cooking, let me know who you are, where you are in the world. So let's get lots of chit chat going on before we start. Um, I hope everyone's had a really good week. It's been a tough one, I think, for a lot of people. If you're still on lockdown, I think people are starting to find it a little bit weird and we're not really sure what we're supposed to be doing. So I'm just here to help you get through your Friday night. Friday night is the best night of the week, isn't it? If you're with me on that, give me a little thumbs up. So how are we doing? Who have we got? We have someone from Puerto Rico. Hello from all the way to Puerto Rico. Um, Lovely to have you join Panama. us. Panama. California. We've Pittsburgh. got people in California, Pittsburgh. Our US contingent Cape always Town. comes to see us. Cape Town again. Hi, how are you doing guys? Lovely. Hey. To have you join us we've got some steve lovely wilcox, people from it italy joining us hi steve wilcox i know you're cooking tonight you sent me a message like what's that I, think you look like darth vader. I look like darth vader i'm not sure whether i should take that as a compliment or not i thought i would look quite fetching in my black outfit today but lois hey ho from, from the land of Oz again. Lois. hello lois from australia what time is it quarter past three in the morning and you are with us again you need to give me a little bit more information. Do you just get off work? Do you get up specially to come and watch? I can't imagine you do. So let me know what you're doing. Um, Noi from Hawaii. <gasps> Noi from Hawaii. So Hawaii is my favorite place in the whole world. So welcome. So lovely to have you join us. Um, whereabouts in Hawaii, please do let me know. We've been to, so I've been to the Big Island a couple of times. And if I could go back, if there's anywhere in the world I could live, it would be probably San Francisco, Hawaii, where else? There's probably a few other places. But anyway, welcome. Lovely to have you join us. How, who else is with us? Anyone? Any um, friends and family that we know of? Um, I know we've had a few injuries tonight. <laughs> Poor Sue, I hope you're watching. So I had a message literally before we started someone was prepping so Sugeen who who always joins me has sliced her thumb and is no longer cooking but I think she's delegated to her husband which is always a good thing I hope you're okay I hope the thumb's not too bad I've got a plaster on my thumb as well but that's just from washing hands anyone else getting really really dry fingers at the moment it's really so I've been picking which isn't good so I've got a plaster on me as well so I'm joining you in that um Welcome. Um, we are here for another Friday Night Curry Club. Um, again, all about sort of just trying to help you along your little journey. Um, Lois waits up all night to watch you and then tries your recipes out later. Lois, you so. She waits up. All so night. you wait until we are cooking live and then you try the recipes. Oh, I'm sending you so much love. Big hug to you. Oh, that's amazing. It's so lovely to hear all of these comments coming through um what's that about oh one thing i haven't mentioned which my son has just said i must mention so we hit a hundred thousand followers or sorry a hundred thousand subs on youtube last saturday so a massive massive thank you to all of you guys everyone who subscribed everyone who watches the videos everyone who watches the live it, it's amazing i can't believe that we've finally got to such a massive milestone for us. So thank you. And please do share the channel with all your friends and family and people who love Indian food and spices and all of that kind of thing, because I just want to keep it growing and keep helping you. Okay, so tonight... Sue said, Sue said her husband is cooking, but do you, you really need seven shallots? So, 
Sue's just asked a question about the shallots. Um, I'm using three. It really depends on the kind of shallots you're using. So a lot of people use the very small ones, which is why in the recipe it says seven shallots. If you're using the, the long ones like I am, two or three are probably going to be enough. Um, I'm using three today, so that's a very good question. But sometimes shallots can be really, really small, which is why the recipe says seven. Um, so just to go back to the recipe and the dish that we're cooking today. So we are making Malabar prawns. It is, I have to say, one of the most beautiful dishes ever. Um, this recipe was taught to me by a chef from Kerala in India um, when I worked at Tamarind. So he gave me a few little inside tips. And it's actually really quite simple to do, but about... So some of the dishes that we've done over the last few weeks have been those deep, dark lamb, meaty curries, which are very much North Indian curries. This is very much a South Indian dish. And I hope that you'll sort of try and see the difference in those styles of cooking. So North Indian, it's all about the deep, rich sauces and onions, ginger, garlic, chilies, that kind of thing. South Indian flavours are much more... They're lighter, they're fish dishes, they're prawn dishes, they have got those coconut flavours because that's what is available locally. So Indian food is very much about using what is available and that's what you cook with. So if I very quickly talk you through what I've got going on here, um, as I said, let me know if you are cooking with me, let me know if you're just watching, um, let me know if you've got any questions and I will do my best to answer them throughout the session. Um, this is a very quick dish, so I'm not going to take up a lot of your time tonight. Um, but what I will try and do is just answer any questions that you might have as we're going through. So, um, ingredients for this dish. We talked a little bit about the shallots, so some shallots garlic, fresh ginger, green chilies. We love these chilies. Now this dish, if you think about the kind of flavors that are going on, the coconut is quite sweet. So you need to have that balance with a little bit of a kick. So I'm using three chilies here. And if you like things a little bit spicy, you can add a few more. Um, the key spice for this dish is fenugreek. So fenugreek, we've used in a number of ways. So this is what we've used previously. This is the spice. So these are fenugreek seeds and these are very, very distinct. You would only really use these in very specific dishes and they've got a very bitter flavor. So that with the sweetness of the prawns and the coconut just works really, really well. Curry leaves. So curry leaves at the moment, just because of the world that we're living in at the minute, is are a little bit tricky. And I know in the UK, they're really, really tricky to come by. A lot of you have messaged me and said, oh, I can't get hold of curry leaves. My advice is if you can't get hold of them, then just miss them out. Just don't stress about it. Just miss them out. And when you can get hold of them, brilliant, you can use them. Usually you can get them from Indian shops, um, Indian grocery shops. If you can't find them fresh, then um, just get some dry ones. And we sell the dry ones on, on the website, so you can order them from us. Um, so curry leaves, fenugreek seeds. Um, the other ingredient that I want to talk to you about, and it's another one that people have been messaging me about, is this stuff. So this is coconut milk powder, okay? So what is coconut milk powder? Is it desiccated coconut? Is it um, um, coconut flour? It's none of those. It's basically coconut milk that's been evaporated and dried. So this has a much sweeter um, flavor than the coconut flour. It's also um, much finer and it makes a really nice smooth paste when you apply water to it. It's not like desiccated coconut, which is the dry, um, coconut flesh that's been um, sort of grated, if you like. Um, what do you do if you don't like coconut? Though? If you don't like coconut, then I'd probably not cook this dish because th this dish is all about those coconut flavours. Um, one thing you can do is just not use coconut milk and use cream instead, or you can use yoghurt. But really, um, it's probably a dish that... Um, 
it, what it does is it, it sort of it is all about the coconut and it's all about the the sweetness of the coconut and the the spiciness of the spices and ingredients we're using so you can use cream you could use yogurt but you're not going to get the proper amazing flavor of the dish because you're not using that coconut and then a couple questions oh a few questions did coming through did you buy your shallots and is it possible to change prawns for fish okay so I was just going to come on to this. So where did I buy my shallots? I got these from Sainsbury's. Um, nowhere special or no sort of artisan shop or anything, just the local supermarket. Most of you should be able to get them. Um, this dish, if you don't like prawns or if you don't have prawns or if you can't get hold of prawns, the reason that I thought we'd do this is a lot of people... Actually, a colleague of mine said, I've got some prawns in the freezer. Have you got anything that you can do with them on Friday night? So I thought, yeah, perfect dish. Um, if you, a lot of people tend to have frozen prawns in the freezer. If you don't like prawns, if you don't have them, absolutely, you can sub in some, a, a really nice meaty white fish, cod um, works, or you could do a mixture of cod and salmon. Um, any white fish will work really well in this. Also, um, you could just, change this into almost like a seafood medley so you could put um, oysters in here you could put in clams you could put in all kinds of things um, it just gives it that lovely little spice but the flavors will work with those kinds of seafood dishes um, Is this for people? so the the amounts that are that I've shared with you in terms of the ingredients absolutely that should be enough for four people um, I'm cooking slightly under that because it's we're not all eating tonight so we're doing slightly less i can't remember what i was saying about my coconut so desiccated coconut is dry um if you haven't got this um coconut powder again don't worry about it um what you can do is just use a little bit more coconut cream instead the reason that i use this is because it adds a real sweetness but also it um helps to thicken the sauce so if you've got some um, corn flour and a little bit of desiccated coconut, you could mix the two up and add a little bit of water and that would be um, a similar sort of thing. But you're going to, you, what desiccated coconut will do is it will give you a texture, which this won't. Um, the other thing I was going to say to you is if you can get it, it's a really lovely ingredient just to have in the cupboard because you can use this to marinate prawns and you can just fry them and do all kinds of things with them. It just gives that lovely coconut sweetness if you like coconut. So that's my coconut um, milk powder. I've got some coconut oil. Um, I've got some coconut milk, um, a tin of tomatoes and the other spice that goes in here is coriander because of that zingy lemon and we've talked about that a little bit already. Hay could be a great fish to use for this. Yep, halibut would be really good. Cod, as I said. Hang on, I've got a little bit of a... There we go. Right, are we all good to go? Everybody happy to start cooking? Let me know, give me a little thumbs up. So what we're going to do, this is one of those dishes that you need to get your prep done. And I know a lot of you have done this already, but I just thought a lot of the time um, we don't sort of do that together so i'm going to do a little bit of the prep with you as we are going through now with the shallots i want them nice and long and thin so as thin as you can get them it feels like you're going to be doing a lot of prep but actually let's just get it done now and it won't take as long to to cook there we go so nice thin long shallots and as I said, please let me know if you're cooking, because I've got, um, a few of you have said you're cooking, but I don't know who is watching, who's cooking. Let me know, it really does help, so that I can either slow things down or move things along, if that is what you need me to do. So please do tell me. So I am doing my third shallot. One of the things about shallots, actually, I will mention, so why are we using shallots in this and not onion? Ever, anyone got any ideas? If you don't have fenugreek, can you use tamarind? So one, a question just come through. If you haven't got fenugreek, can you use tamarind? 
so fenugreek um, in terms of the spice and tamarind are two very, very different things. Um, a lot of the South Indian dishes, especially the seafood style dishes, do have tamarind in them because it's about that tangy flavour that they're trying to get through. Um, oh, those shallots made me cry. Um, but I'm intentionally not putting it in this dish because I don't want... Um, I don't want that tanginess, I want more of a creaminess, but absolutely, if you want to balance the sweetness with a little bit of tang, then you can use tamarind. Um, fenugreek is giving a very different flavour, so it's not one or the other, you could, you could use both. But if you haven't got the fenugreek, then just miss it out, and you can use it if you want to. You can use the... Um, uh, tamarind in instead fenugreek? fenugreek powder is absolutely fine fenugreek powder is just the seeds that have been crushed up um, when you are using them in that way you're probably we're going to need to do it slightly differently so if you are using um, fenugreek powder then you don't want to add it at the beginning and i'll talk you through that so i'll talk you through the process in a in a, in a minute um Okay, more questions, yeah. All I'm doing at the moment is I'm just slicing up my garlic and I'm slicing. So whenever you cook a dish, always think about all of that dish all the way through. So I've got nice chunky bits of um, um, shallot, which means that I'm also going to cut my garlic so it's nice and chunky as well. So that's my reasoning behind that. And it's, it's, it's just about thinking about that dish all the way through. I don't want... Um, a smooth, smooth sauce. I want everything to follow through. Okay, questions? Um, can you go through what's on your masala and baba? And also, can you use frozen cooked prawns? If so, when do you add them? Okay, so two questions. You want me to go... I'll go through my masala and baba um, in a minute if whilst um, we've got a bit of cooking going on so that I can spend a bit of time. If you've got cooked prawns, absolutely fine, not a problem to use. Um, you will add them at the same time as we will do with the cooked, um, with the raw prawns. You just need to make sure your masala is really nice and thick and beautiful and luxurious, and then you can just add those in. So don't worry about that. If that's what you've got, that's absolutely fine. Okay, so what I've got here, I've got garlic. Um, sliced up. I've now got my chilli sliced up as well and I'm also going to add my ginger. Again, nice and thin. Nice thin slices but this, in this dish, everything's going to have a little bit of a texture. That's, that doesn't mean it's going to be chunky, it's just the way that we do it with this dish. So I'm just going to show you my ginger and I've done this before. I always keep the skin on just because I like it. So I just slice them nice and thinly and then I just take it the other way and I'm just going to get some nice little julienne if you want to get all technical about it. Really nice thin pieces. There we go. Just slice that one up. Okay. Is everybody with me? Someone's just asked you to talk about make and size of your pan. The make and size of my pan. I get asked this a lot. I use different pans for different dishes, which I think you guys have probably seen by now. Um, it really depends on what I'm doing. So if I was doing a deep, rich, meaty curry, then I tend to use um, a cast iron pan. Um, this is a chef's pan, so it's just got a really nice thick bottom and it just works really well with these kinds of dishes. Um, South Indian cooking isn't about that low, well, it is sometimes, but for this particular dish, if you think about what we're cooking, we think we're cooking prawns, they don't take much cooking, so your effort goes into making that sauce really nice and flavoursome. 
um, and we're going to do that fairly quickly so um, this is just a mayor pan chef's pan um, stainless steel and it, it's probably one of my favorite pans because I use it a lot in lots and lots of different different dishes okay Shh. another question has just come through garlic ginger and chilies as a frozen paste as an ice cube is that in ice cube trays is that the right for this dish um by all means if that's what you've got if you've got frozen ginger garlic and chilies in a, in an ice cube brilliant for doing that by the way because I think that's it it's one of my hacks I always tell people to do that um yeah by all means you can use that you just have to be really really careful because it can catch on the bottom of the pan with this kind of dish which is why I've left everything quite chunky okay shall we get cooking everybody with me can you cook this curry in a clay pot you could cook it in a clay pot if that's what you've got then uh, by all means, you can cook it in a clay pot. Okay, I'm going to put my oven on. Um, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to put my hob on. Um, one thing that's quite important is whenever you're cooking anything, um, and hopefully uh, as we carry on cooking together, you'll see this, um, think about the oil that you're using. So a lot of the time I always say rapeseed oil is a great oil to use for a lot of curries. It's absolutely fine. When you're cooking a dish like this, which is all about those South Indian flavours, all about what's locally available, um, and you're using coconut, by all means, you know, go for a really good coconut oil. Um, coconut oil is one of those good fats. It's not a fat that your body will store. It's a fat that your body utilises. So it's a good fat to use. Obviously, it's still fat, so just be a little bit mindful of what you're doing. So I'm going to put in about a tablespoon of that. Is everybody using coconut oil or have we got a whole array of different things going on? It's Michael's always good to know. I need to get another beer. Michael, is that Michael? Yeah, he said, can you wait? Michael, I will wait for you because it's very important. It's Friday night and I think you deserve a beer. So I'm gonna hold fire. Just give me a shout. Let me know when you've got your beer because I wouldn't, wouldn't wanna, um, now look what's happened i've only had a sip right michael are you with me so prep wise i'm just going to go over very very quickly what we've got i've got my um, garlic sliced i've got my ginger i've got my chilies i have got my fenugreek. no i haven't i've got my uh, shallots i've got my fenugreek and i've got my curry leaves and do you know what I'm going to do? Give me my phone. I'm just going to do a... You know how I do my Instagram little Please. shots? I think I might um, do a little... Let's do a little over the top. No, oh dear. Right. Are you with me? Yeah, most people are using coconut. Gabriel's using olive oil, but wishes he could use coconut. That's fine. Cooking is about cooking, so if that's what you've got, if you've got olive oil, then please, please use I'd much rather have you cooking than say, oh, do you know what, I haven't got it, I'm not going to do it. So, okay. If you have liquid coconut oil, is there any difference between that and what you've got? So co coconut oil generally, because it's a saturated fat, room temperature, it tends to be solid. Um, I ha You can get an oil, it's, it's pretty much the same, so... Um, don't stress about that, it's absolutely, in fact, I think I've got some in the cupboard, it's absolutely fine. Right. Hello to Tread the Globe. Hi Tread the Globe, have you joined me? Lovely to have you on board, how are you doing? I hope um, Istanbul is good for you. Um, are you cooking today? Let me know if you're cooking. I haven't heard from you, so I'm assuming you're not cooking today, but it was lovely to have you cook last week and it was really lovely to see your pictures. Welcome, thank you for joining us. Okay, so my oil is in the pan, it's starting to heat up. First things first, I'm going to add my whole spices. So your first stage of spicing, when it comes to cooking any Indian dishes, your whole spice is your base flavour. And what we're going to do is we're going to add our fenugreek seeds. Now, if you are using a fenugreek powder, please don't add it now because you are more likely to burn it than, than, than add any flavour. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my fenugreek seeds. If you've got them, then use those. Don't 
let your oil get too hot because what we don't want to do is add any color we don't want to burn these because then they'll stay really really hard so i'm just going to pop those in and just start to give i've dropped a few curry leaves in there which is fine so you'll see them sizzle and as with anything i always say first layer of spices as soon as they get aromatic you can go in with your next ingredient. So into that, we are first of all going to add our garlic. Now, please be very, very careful. We do not want to burn any of this. Um, if you've joined me in the past, in the past few weeks, I I've always said that when you cook any Indian dish, it's all about the onions. The onions are what sort of prescribes how that dish is going to turn out. Now, when we are cooking... Um, a seafood dish or a um, lentil or a vegetable dish we don't want to take out onions really dark so last week when we did the boona you can remember we took out onions till they were really dark and caramelized and beautiful in color um, with this dish we want our final dish to be quite light and quite airy so that it's it 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 doesn't overpower the seafood that we're going to put in there. So just think about that. We, all we want to do is just toast our garlic just so that it loses that raw flavour, but we don't really particularly want too much colour on it. So the garlic goes in. I'm just going to show you what mine looks like in the pan. Can we see that? Yeah, so it's just starting to colour. You can use frozen garlic and ginger. That's what you've got. Um, you know, ingredients are a little bit tricky to come by at the moment. If you've got that, then then absolutely you can. Just be careful when you put that into the oil. If it's frozen, it will spit at you, and it is going to be slightly different um, in the sort of end result. But yes, there's no reason why you can't. Okay, so I've got a little bit of colour. I'm now going to put in my shallots. Hang on a minute. Oh. Hang on. I'm going to put my shallots in, but I'm also going to add, hang on, my curry leaves. So if you've got curry leaves, I'm going to get those in as well. And when you put your curry leaves in, they will start to pop. Temperature, oh, I don't know what it would be. Um, yeah, so um, temperature-wise, you don't want your oil to be too hot at the beginning because it will just burn the garlic that's in there. Um, you just want it to be on a medium heat just so that it starts to toast. Now, into that, I'm just going to show you what it looks like. Can we see? Now, if you're cooking this, I just want you to just take a minute and just share with everybody who's not cooking what that smells like, because I think it's just amazing. And you've just put two or three ingredients in there, but it smells amazing. So please do just put a little comment. Let us know what you're, what does it remind you of? Because to me, it's just, it's really delicate, but it's really quite potent as well. It's just a lovely, lovely aroma, really lovely smell. And I'm now going to add my ginger and I'm going to put my chilies in as well. Now, when you put your chilies in, be very, very mindful that it might catch the back of your throat because that's what happens. So just be a little bit aware. Okay. Now, with this dish, uh, um, just going back to a little bit about um, onions and, and, and those being the key part of a lot of Indian dishes. Now, with this dish, unlike the buna that we did last week, we don't want to get a lot of colour. All we want to do is just cook them just until they start to go golden because we don't want to end up with a really heavy based masala at the end. So let's just cook these until we get a little bit of colour.
And whilst that's doing that, there we go. We just let it do its thing. Okay. So is everybody? Oh, we want to see the pan, do we? All good? Everyone happy? Yeah? Right, just gonna give that a little stir. Okay. So, we're gonna let that do its thing. We're gonna let that just cook through and just get a little, little bit of color onto it. And whilst that's doing what it needs to do, I'm just going to grind up my spices for the next bit. So um, we used coriander seeds before and I have talked about coriander before as well. So coriander seeds, what they add to your dish is almost like a, a, a lemony zing. And if you're at home now, which hopefully most of you are, um, if you take your coriander seeds, if you've got some there, um, just take a little pinch and chew them and just think about what you're getting. You should be getting almost like a citrusy, zingy flavor. So I'm gonna put in a teaspoon of coriander seeds and I'm just gonna to start to crush them. And when you crush them, smell. Have a little, take a good old sniff and just think about what you can get, what you, what you get in terms of the aromatics. So you should be getting a lemony, a very gentle, zingy flavor coming through or a zingy aromatic coming through. As always, use all of your pestle and mortar. Use the space in there to make sure you're grinding your spices and you're not bashing them. If you're using fenugreek powder, do you add it after the chili and ginger? So if you are using fenugreek powder, um, I've, I've told you or I've asked you not to put it in yet. We'll, what we'll do is once the tomatoes go in, that's when we will add our ground spices. So the coriander will go in, we'll put some turmeric, a little bit of chili powder, and then you can put your fenugreek in as well and we'll let that cook through. Okay. So who is grinding their coriander seeds? Anybody? <sighs> Smells really zingy. Is everybody still with me? If you're cooking, are you with me? I must come back and say, actually, from last week, I got so many pictures of the dishes that you guys had cooked, not only from this evening, but then later on through, throughout the week. It's amazing to see. So please, please, please keep those coming in. Um, it's just, I love seeing them because it's really nice to see that you guys are actually finding these sessions useful and you're, you're enjoying them. But also it's great for other people to see, actually, this is doable at home, it's really easy. Indian food doesn't have to just come from a takeaway. You can make it. So here's the ground coriander. Can you see? It's quite heavy. Oh. So my ground coriander is there. I'm just gonna let this cook a little bit more. And whilst that's doing that thing, I'm gonna have a little drink. Oh, it's hard work this cooking. So we've we got any more questions coming through. The pestle and mortar to an electric um, so the question is, do I prefer my pestle and mortar to an electric grinder? I use both. Um, it really depends on what I'm doing. So if I'm, like today, just grinding up a specific spice, then I have my pestle and mortar out on the side and I will use it to do, do it as, as I just have. Um, if I'm making my garam masala or blends or anything like that or doing um, a madras, anything like that, then I tend to use my um, electric grinder. So I use both. I don't have one over the other. It really depends on the job that I'm doing and, uh, and what's required for that job. So which do, which do I prefer using? I prefer using my pestle and mortar just because it makes you feel... <laughs> <laughs> um, and you fit, I don't know, I, I, I do like using my pestle and mortar, that's why I have it out. Um, okay, so the shallots are in, my ginger is in, my garlic, my chilies, um, my fenugreek seeds are in, and that's just sort of, I just want to show you, that's pretty much 
there that's what I'm looking for so the shallots are nice and translucent there's a little bit of color garlic, but it's looking pretty good so into that the next bit is tomatoes so I've got my I've, all the all that is is a tin of tomatoes but I want to blitz them up so I bring out my handy this is getting so much love this little contraption at the moment every other question is about oh where'd you get that from so all I want to do is just blitz up those um tomatoes that I've got in here these are just plum tomatoes from a tin 400 grams I'm just giving them a little bit of a blitz just to break them down a little bit okay and that's it nice and simple chuck that in there Johnny said lockdown exercise with the custom water I'm not even kidding you this is a workout in itself so whoever says that cooking isn't physical it is okay so I've just all I've done is just blitz up my tomatoes if you haven't got a, a blender or a hand you know or you can just put your knife in the tin and just break up the tomatoes um, just to break them down a little bit so that goes in and that's going to remember it's going to cool your pan right down can you use mustard seeds instead of fenugreek seeds no mustard seeds are going to well you can it's just going to give you a different flavor um if you, like if you can't find fenugreek, just miss them out for now. It's still going to taste amazing, I promise. And if you, if you can't get hold of those kinds of spices, just go to the shop on my website and you can order them. We sell them in little refill packs. So just have a look on the website. There's all of that and, and you can get to the shop from the app as well. So whether you use my app or the website, we do sell all of these ingredients on there. So please do take a look. So my gas, once those tomatoes go in, what you're doing is you're cooling that pan right down. So I've now turned my cooker right up to high and I will show you again the inside of my pan. So that's what it looks like. And it looks pretty, what well, I'd say, it looks like a very raw masala at the moment. So the tomatoes haven't cooked down. They've still got that acidity in them. Um, they're not, it's not by all means not ready yet. So the temperature's gone up. I've just got a question. Fresh chopped tomatoes. You absolutely can use fresh chopped tomatoes. Same process. They might take a little bit longer to cook down, but just chop them up really nice and finely, put them in or blitz them, whatever you want to do. Absolutely, you can use fresh tomatoes. So my temperature's gone up a little bit and into here, now we're going to add our ground spices. So the first stage of spicing was at the beginning where you add your base spices into your oil. Your second stage of spicing comes when you put your liquid in your pan. So here the tomatoes have gone in. We're going to add our ground spices or our taste and our color spices. So your ground coriander seeds go in. See? And we are going to add turmeric. A teaspoon of turmeric goes in. And I'm going to put in a teaspoon of my chili powder. This is Kashmiri chili powder. And in the recipe, I do say a hot chili powder because what we want to have is that sweetness and the, that lovely coconut flavor balanced with a real kick. Um, so, if you have got hot chili powder, you can add that, um, or you can rely on the green chilies that you put in there because they're all gonna add that lovely heat. So coriander seeds, sorry, coriander, um, crushed coriander goes in, turmeric and your chili powder goes in. Whilst I'm doing this, I'm just very quickly, I know I had a question before, just to talk you through my spice tin. Turmeric, iconic spice, um, orange color. Cumin seeds. Garam masala, iconic spice blend of the north of India. Mustard seeds, black or brown mustard seeds. Coriander seeds, Kashmiri chilli powder and mithi or fenugreek. So this is the herb 
of the spice that we've just put into here. So that these are my seven key spices. These are the spices that you need for your everyday cooking. And you said, are you sure that was 400 grams tomatoes? It looked way more than... No, that was 400, that was just a tin. It was a tin of tomatoes, normal 400 gram tin of tomatoes. The only thing that might have made it look a little bit extra is what I swilled out the, the, the empty can because I don't like to waste anything and I just emptied that water into, into it, but it was just a normal tin of tomatoes. Okay. Now you should be getting those lovely, amazing aromas coming through. Now, this lovely stuff here that we've got, which is our coconut milk powder. I've got some water here. All we're going to do is just add a little bit of water and just make this into a paste. And you'll see, hopefully, that it just makes a really lovely thick paste. <coughs> Someone asked, how's your Wolverhampton accent totally vanished? <laughs> What's that? How is my Wolverhampton accent totally vanished? Okay, shall I tell you the story? So this is what happened. So I am born and brought up in Wolverhampton. Love it, it's still my home. That's where my mum lives. Um, that's where I was born, brought, love it. Still, and my mum still lives there, so we still go down to see her um, all the time. I went to university in Bath and turned up um, on my first day. I was like, oh, no, I'm yeah, I'm yeah, okay. And um, very, very quickly, <laughs> let's just say the people that I lived with in my first year house beat it out of me and said, you cannot speak like that <laughs> in Bath. So, uh, that's where it went and it's I don't it, this is not that for some reason on YouTube and I don't know what it is and it does make me laugh my accent has had more comments than I care to imagine um, I'm not putting this on this is how I speak I'm not making it up I'm not on I honestly this is how I speak on a normal everyday if you met me in this, this is how I would speak so I don't put it on. I'm not faking it. This is this is this is me. This is me. Um, um, have you put any salt in? So I'm going to put some salt in now. Sorry, we digress. Anyway. Um, what about fenugreek powder? Is that so if you if you have if you're using fenugreek powder, your fenugreek can go in with your tomato. So your second stage of spicing with your turmeric, your chili powder, your ground um, coriander seeds, your fenugreek can go in as well. So what I've done here is I've just made a paste. I'm getting more questions, yes? Um, well, it's not a question, Steve Wilcox added a coconut block. Oh yeah, you can add the, the, yeah, the creamed coconut blocks. So this is what I've done. I've made a paste, can you see in that? So th from the coconut milk, all I've done is add warm water and it's just created this lovely, thick, amazing paste. And that's what I'm going to add into um, this dish. Now, if you've got this powder, you could use this as a marinade. So if you've got some prawns, you can just sprinkle them with that or you can mix in some spices here. It's an amazing ingredient to use. So that's going to go in as well. And then into that, we are going to add some salt as well, because you need to season. So I'm going to put in about a teaspoon and a bit. Okay, so are we all, are you all with me? Is everybody still here? So once that coconut has gone in, can you see, I'm just mixing that through. And it's going to completely change the colour of that dish. Yep. Yeah. So we need this to just come together. And my temperature is on a, a medium now, just to let all of that come together. 
Whilst that is simmering away, now the reason I'm going to let that simmer is because I want the acidity from the tomatoes to break down and just cook through. And it gives me a little bit of time just to check my prawns are good to go. Let's just pour that last bit in here. And I'm going to get my coconut milk ready as well. So is everybody who's cooking still with me? Are we all at the same place? You should be seeing now that this masala is really starting to come together and it's going to have some... Mm, smells amazing. So with your prawns, if you are using um, some raw king prawns, just make sure that you just slice along the back vein there. And if you've got any of that digestive tract, just pull it out with your knife. Most of the time, it's already been done. Depends on the prawns that you've got, but just slice them through. And what that means is that they will cook more quickly and when they cook, they'll just open up beautifully as well. So just do check them and just get those little bits of that vein just taken out. Okay. Uh, don't you put sugar uh, with the tomato sauce to kill the acidity? So I've had a question about sugar and adding sugar to your sauce. It is, a, it is something that is done quite a lot. So some people will put a little bit of sugar in there just to get rid of that acidity. You don't need to do that. You don't need to add that sugar in there. If you give, your, if you give the masala enough time to let it cook down, that acidity will just come through by itself. Or it will, I, don't, I don't see the point in adding that extra sugar when you don't need to. So just give it a little bit of time um, and it will cook through. Um, is there any difference between coconut powder and coconut milk powder? Coconut milk powder is absolutely what you're looking for. So coconut milk powder is the same as the stuff that I've used today. So that's exactly well, what you're looking for. So coconut powder is the same as coconut milk powder and then coconut flour is a different thing. Um, there we go. Okay, so my prawns are looking pretty good. I hope yours are too. Take a little picture of them, share them with me. Just give your hands a little rinse. Okay, are we all good? Is everybody still with me? Right, so these prawns that I'm using today, are, they're king size prawns, but they're frozen. They've, I've had them in the freezer, which is why I thought, let's do this dish, because it's a, a lovely dish to do. Um, but if you are lucky enough to live somewhere where you can get some fresh prawns, this is the dish that you should try to do with them. But yeah, mine are from the freezer. Okay, I'm just going to show you how that's looking, and you should hopefully be in very much the same place looking yum it's smelling incredible now what i will say now is if there's anybody there who is going to be cooking some rice with this dish then i would urge you to get your rice on now i'm just going to do some plain rice um and i cooked this before with you so i'm not going to go through it i've already washed mine i'm just going to get it on so that it's ready. Why do, you, why do you use coconut milk and the coconut powder? Please? Because I, so what, the question is why am I using both the coconut paste and the coconut milk? It's just to intensify that flavour. The coconut um, powder adds a very different sweetness than, than coconut milk does. It also helps to thicken so if you if you can't get the two ingredients don't worry um just use if you can get hold of coconut cream you can use coconut cream that will be a nice thick um ingredient to use now one of the little hacks that i tell people is if you can't if you want to use coconut cream but all you can get is coconut milk if you put your tin of coconut milk in the fridge 
what will happen is it will separate and you'll get the cream the really thick gloopy stuff at the top and that will set and then all the bottom will be the water so you can just scrape off the top bit and use that so it's a really good way of um and cheating so it's more red than orange it's probably because you put it depends on your tomatoes it also depends on the amount of chili powder that you put in it's probably red until we add our coconut milk now it's going to it will um calm that color down a little bit so that's what we're going to do now so if you do that too pop in your coconut milk because you know you're absolutely right it's not just about the flavor it's also about how the dish looks um, and it is a really important part of any meal is that it it looks right so once that coconut has gone in it will really really change the color of the dish it'll make it look more creamy and we're just going to let that cook down. Now with any um, seafood style dish, it is gonna be saucy, it is gonna have a lot of sauce to it, which is why you tend to have it with a plain boiled rice because there's so much flavor and so much yummy stuff in here that all you need is just that rice to have it with. Um, and because it's South Indian as well, it is all about rice in South India. So, you know, every dish you have that South Indian um, you have a, a, a rice dish to go with it. So all I'm going to do here is just bring this back up to temperature so it's nice and hot and warm. And then we're going to just add those prawns in. I'm just gonna get a little spoon out, have a little taste, make sure that I'm happy in a minute once it's come up to temperature. Okay, any more questions whilst you've still got me because I'm telling you once these prawns go in, I'm out of here. I'm sitting in my lounge and I'm I'm enjoying my the rest of my Friday night. So, do you ever um, use a base gravy? To do, do I ever use a base gravy? Interesting question. So, um, <laughs> there's two schools of thought really when it comes to Indian food. There's this whole thing about um, using base gravies and 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 all that stuff and that is we call it the BIR method which is the British Indian restaurant method um, and then there's the way that I cook which is every dish starts from scratch and you just cook everything the way that I've been taught basically so no I don't use a basic I, d I don't use base gravy for any of my dishes um, because each dish has its own origin, it has its own starting point, right through from how you cut your onions to how you finish that dish. is They're all very different for all the different types of dishes that you do. Um, so no, I don't. But having said that, that's not me saying that, that the BIR method is incorrect or it's wrong, it's not the right thing to do. The BIR method is amazing um, and it is genius because without that all these restaurants um all these indian restaurants wouldn't be able to operate so I'm, I'm not saying that one way is right and one way is wrong i'm just saying they're two very very different methods and and this is the way that i've been taught to cook so that's how that, that's how i do it um okay so we've got a lovely sauce here Assuming more questions the, the recipe says 209 mils uh, but you added the whole 400 yeah i did add the whole 400 only because that's well nice. <laughs> it does say, only because, so Sugin, you are right, you pick me up on all my little errors, thank you very much. Um, the only reason that I've used the whole thing is I, w I would have just shaken it and used half of it. Um, if you buy a um, coconut cream box, it's half that amount, and I couldn't get hold of one, so I used the tin. Um, I could have just put half in there, but I put the whole lot in there um, because I'm greedy. But no, it doesn't really matter. If that's what you've got, I mean, what you could do is use half of it and then and freeze half of it. 
but I just thought for the sake of half a tin, I was just going to use the whole lot. Um, it will make the, the sauce um, more saucy. So if you like it more saucy, then absolutely fine to use that. If you want it a little bit thicker, then just go with the, the, the recipe, the 200 um, that's in the you recipe. you don't have any type of coconut product, what do you recommend for adding a bit of sweetness? Oh, interesting question. So to add that little bit, if you don't have any coconut product, how can you add the sweetness? The only way that you can really add a little bit of sweetness is obviously through sugar, a little bit of honey, maybe some maple syrup, anything like that um will add that sweetness but it will be a very different flavor um it's so that is more sort of verging on almost like your butter chicken kind of flavor whereas this is much more much more coastal if that's the right if that's do the right you, way of describing it do you strongly recommend to use shallots and not onions in this dish? so with this dish um i the reason that I use shallots as opposed to onions is shallots are a little bit lighter. And when you're, when you're cooking a seafood dish, when you're cooking a seafood um, style sauce and gravy, you don't want the harshness that a lot of onions can have in them, especially depending on where you are in the world. Some onions can be really quite potent. Um, so shallots work better with these kind of the, the, this kind of protein that we're using. Um, okay, so where we should all be now is at the point where our sauce, our masala is pretty much done. It's bubbling away. I would urge you all now to just have a little taste because this is where you're going to know if you need to add a little bit more um, salt, a little bit more chilli. Um, just have a little taste. What you will get is that lovely creaminess. It should have a little kick to it. but it should be really so satisfyingly warming and quite unctuous in that it makes you want more and more and more of it. So I'm just gonna show you what my dish looks like. So it's a much more sort of orangey in color now. And we're gonna continue. So questions just come through, did my mum teach me how to cook? Yep, I just cooked. My mum made me do all the bits and pieces that we had to do in the kitchen, rotis, um, all the sort of building blocks. So she, she absolutely did teach me how to cook. She taught me about basic masalas, lentils, dal, all of that kind of thing. And then when I started to work at the restaurant, then I started to pick up or... I say work at the restaurant, it was more when I set up the website and I started to go into people's homes and teach, that's when I sort of started to extend my repertoire and start to go out and speak to chefs and, and, and find out and um, about regionality, go to India, did a little few little sort of food tours around there and just find out, because India is vast, India is a huge country and the food that comes from India is so vast and it just varies from state to state to state, it's so different. Um, this compared to the food that my family would eat up in the north is so different. We don't have coconut up there. We don't, it's, it's just a completely different world. So, so yeah, it's just triggered that interest, but yeah, absolutely. My mum taught me how to cook. Okay. So once your masala is done, that's it. That's finished. So what you could do with this is you could, um, put half it into a tub and you could put that in the freezer and then just whip that out and next time you want to curry um, or a dish like this, you've got, you've got your masala made, you just defrost it, heat it up, add your fish, add your prawns, whatever you want to do to it. So there's quite a, a, a nice volume there. Are you passing this skill on to your children or are they not interested? My are children they? are actually very, very good. Um, they are sat there watching and learning. So they, they, they my daughter cooks all the time. Uh, my son, is much more of um what's the word a critique so he will mark me out of 10 for most of my dishes and quite often i don't i don't think i've quite surpassed the uh 
seven or eight with him yet so i'm working on it okay so once your masala is nice and hot and pipe and you've tasted it and you're happy with the seasoning get your prawns in there and remember your prawns are not going to take much cooking so all we want them to do is just change from that gray color into that beautiful beautiful pink um if you are using cooked prawns then and your masala is ready and you're happy with it you can pop your cooked prawns in there and you can just turn it off because it doesn't really require any more cooking all you're wanting to do is heat the prawns through and that will happen with the temperature that's in that pan so whilst that is simmering it's just cooking away I'm just going to get some coriander ready just for a little bit of seasoning, a little bit of freshness. Just slice that up. And it's just a really amazing way to finish off any, any dish. There we go. And I'm gonna move these bits and pieces out to the side. Any more questions, guys? Where is my serving bowl? Here it is. Any more questions while you still have me? I'm gonna have a little drink. So give your prawns a nice stir through. Oh, they look amazing. So when your prawns are in there, just bring that right up to temperature and let that Get nice and warm. So your um, rice should be cooking as well if you're cooking it. Another question. What's the best way to store leaf coriander? The best way to store leaf coriander. So coriander is one of those funny things, isn't it? That you buy it and it's fresh and it's amazing, but very, very quickly it, it, um, it doesn't really last. So there's a few things that I do. Um, depending on how much of it I've got, I will either um, pop it into um, a glass jar with some water and just have it on the side and that will sort of keep it fresh for a few days. Um, the other thing that I do is just get a Tupperware pot, get some kitchen roll and just wet the kitchen roll, put it into the Tupperware and then just put it into, put the coriander in your Tupperware with that wet um, kitchen roll underneath it and over the top of it and that will keep it fresh for a little while um, if you know you're not going to use it in the next few days then what i tend to do is i will chop it up like this i will get a tupperware tub pop it into the tupperware tub and just put it in the freezer and then i've just got some for the next time i need any um, it really depends on you know if you think you're going to be using it then keep it in the fridge if you if you know that's not going to happen, then it's always good to freeze it. The other thing that you can do with more hardy herbs is you can chop them up, put them into ice cube trays and just top them up with oil and then freeze them. And then you've got little tubs uh, or just pop them out and you've got some oil, oiled herbs that you can use when you're cooking. Could you, okay. Could you squirt in some fresh lime at the end of this? So I'm just going to turn that off. I just want to show you the inside of this. So, if you were to use fish pieces, how long would they take to cook? So, fish and prawns, can you see them? Can you see? Yeah. So, fish and prawns obviously don't take very long to cook. So, I'm turning this off now, I'm taking it off the heat. Um, if you were doing nice pieces of fish, again, you don't want to cook your fish until it just breaks down. It will literally take a couple of minutes. That sauce is really, really hot. You put your pieces of fish in and just let them simmer away. What you don't want to do is get your spoon and start mixing them all up because you'll just break them and they'll just flake into pieces. So just put them in when you're, and then I'd say two or three minutes and then you're done and just leave it and then um, you're ready to serve. If you were doing this beforehand, make your masala, make your sauce and then leave it. And then just before you want to eat, you bring your sauce 
back up to temperature and then you add your fish. Let it cook for a couple of minutes and serve it. So don't do it beforehand because they will just disintegrate and break down. So I'm just going to show you this very, very beautiful uh, dish. Lime at the end? So, oh, so, apologies. Yeah, so absolutely a great dish to have a little bit of lime or lemon juice in there. Um, just at the very end because it's just, again, one of those coastal, zingy, delicious flavours that are so, so important. And then some people have asked if you are freezing in the summer, when you come back to cook it, do you need to defrost it before so, cooking it? So if you are cooking a masala, um, do the question is, do you need to defrost it beforehand? Now, it really depends on what you're doing. If you've got a tub of this mas your masala that, um, hang on a minute, let me just, I'm trying to do three things at the same time. Um, if you are, if you've got a masala in the fridge that you want to use at a later date, then what I tend to do is I will take it out in the morning because I know I'm going to have it that evening. I'll take it out in the morning. I will um, just let it, def just out on the surface um, and just let it defrost over the day and then come back to it and then add whatever protein I want to it. So essentially, yes, it does defrost. But if you haven't got time to do that, sometimes you just forget. Other times what I've done is I've just got it out of the freezer, I'll put it into a pan, I'll put a little bit of water in there and I'll let it simmer and let it just dissolve and melt down. And then um, once it's completely um, melted and heated through, then I will add my protein, whatever that might be to it. Okay, got more questions. So before um, I finish, do you have any good ideas for a shrimp dish that doesn't feature curry leaves so prominently? Um, I have got lots of prawn dishes on the website. Or shrimp dishes, sorry, <laughs> on the website. Um, this is just one recipe which has got the curry leaves in there because it's a South Indian dish. Um, if you, you. As I said earlier, if you haven't got curry leaves, just miss them out and you can you can do the same dish without them. Um, I've also got other recipes on the website that um, use tamarind, um, which gives that lovely tangy flavour, so that's a really nice one to do. Um, Jai, can you pass me a lemon whilst you're there? Um, um, I've also got some other ones that are tandoori, tandoori um, flavours. Oh, tandoori, you can't get the staff. Tandoori um, flavours with prawns and shrimps works really, really well. So there are lots and lots of recipes on the website and on the app, so please do have a look and see what you think. Um, there's lots of sort of ideas there, but I just want to come back to... So there is my Malabar prawn dish. I am going to finish it with a little bit of coriander. Yeah, I have more questions. There's no, another question. No, not, there is another question. What do you think is the best um, chef's knife, kitchen knife to use? Um, oh, there's so many kitchen knives. So this is a Tajiro Senko. Um, I will come back to give it a little wipe. So this is a Tajiro Senko. Um, oh no, this one isn't, is it? This is a different Japanese knife. Oops. Um, but Tajiro Senko, I really like. This is a Yaksal. Um, it, I do like the Japanese knives. They're really thin and really precise and, and lovely to use. So that's what I tend to use um, because I just like them. And I think once you find a knife that, f that is good for you, I've got quite small hands, so I just like the, the shape of them and the size of them, so they work well for me. Okay, so just to finish that off, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a squeeze of lemon. I've topped it with some um, coriander leaves, give it a little bit of a wipe, but there you go. So that is my Malabar prawn dish. It's creamy, it's coconutty, it's hot and spicy, and it's perfect for your Friday night. Um, thank you for joining me. I hope you've had fun.
I know I have. Um, if you guys have got anything that you specifically want me to cook um, or want me to share with you, then please do keep those suggestions coming in. Let me know what you think. Um, thank you for your time today. I hope that next week is good for you. I know it's been a challenging few weeks. I hope everybody is well. Um, make sure you stay safe. Um, and just to reiterate, I've still got my ebook out there. So if you um, are looking for store cupboard cooking ideas, there's, a, I think there's about 60 odd recipes in there from tin chickpeas to eggs to all kinds of different things, tray baked tandoori, you name it. There's loads and loads of ideas, lots of lunch ideas as well. Um, and I am donating all of the funds from that to um, frontline workers. So please do um, download that and um, take a look. It'd be lovely to get a little bit more of a, of a push on that. Um, thank you for joining me. I hope you've had fun. Um, and as I say, any more questions, any questions throughout the week, please do contact me on Instagram, um, YouTube, Twitter, and um, Facebook. I am on all of those platforms and I will answer all of, you, all of your questions. Um, thank you for joining me. Um, if you have cooked tonight, please, please, please take a picture. So there's a link, if you want to know where to buy the eBooks, we've just had a question on the website, on my website, but there's also going to be a link at the end of this video. Um, if you look at last week's video, there's a link at the end of that. Um, but if you go onto the website, there's a whole section on my eBooks. Um, just look for the store cupboard eBook. It's on there. Um, and it, I think it's 4 99 So nothing, it's not going to break the bank. It's really not going to break the bank, but it's all money that's going to um, frontline workers. And if I can do a little bit to help out, then all good. Um, but as I said, I will share that link again with you. Um, if you have cooked tonight um, live, then take a picture before you dive in. I want to see your dishes. I want to see what you've created and what you've made. Um, if you are watching this post live, then again, please take a picture, share your picture with me on Facebook, share your picture with me on my app, share your picture with me of the dish that you've created um, and send through lots and lots of questions and photos and all of that kind of stuff. So thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've had a lovely time. Have a lovely weekend. Have a fantastic week and I will see you all um, next Friday. And I'll tell you what we're going to cook next Friday. Um, but I'll tell you in the week. I'm not really sure. I haven't thought about it yet. So maybe some snacks. We'll try and go in the garden, maybe do some tandoori. But thank you for joining me. Take care.